Hey boys and girls, this is Ricky Mouse, and in this episode of Ricky Mouse's Gay House, we're going to teach you how to use poppers to loosen up your asshole. Oh boy, episode 37 begins now. Hello friends, welcome to the ANCAP Barbershop, your source for libertarianism and anarchy. Now for your hosts, the legendary, the inimitable, Adam Brown, and of course yours truly, Scott McDonald, the ANCAP Barber. Everybody, and Cat Barbershop here live from the Martin Screlly Studios for the first time in history. I believe that uh, we've gone live like that. Pretty cool. Is it? Why is that funny? I. It was the intro. What was that? What was that? Huh? Uh, that, I don't know. That was a a, a little steamboat uh, Willie looking guy that <laughs> ran in here and and did that. The video is misleading. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So okay. yeah, cool. A- the Ancap Barbershop. It's me and Adam. Uh, we don't have. Did you ever even message Tanner? No, I did not. Okay, uh, he should know by now. Well, right? I t- I said something in our Facebook chat. Hold on, let me turn this. I said something in our Facebook chat. So, so fuck him. Yeah. Uh, Dave. It's Dave. Not, it's not like we're on an abnormal schedule. It's Monday right. night. It's like, uh, uh, Dave couldn't make it for honest reasons. He's working. And uh, uh, what yeah. a loser! Or no, he's not working. He's well, he is working, but he's working on uh, Kara's car or some shit like that. Okay, yeah. But uh, look, we've got a couple of things to get into today. We're going to skip the book club yet again, um, and I will tell you why. It is not because we don't have everybody here, which is the excuse that I used last time. It is actually because I uh, uh, I planned on doing all of my prep work in the couple hours leading up to us starting this, but I instead slept. And uh, l- the reason for that is, and I haven't told Adam this, but last night, um, so me, uh, the kid had just laid down and went to bed. Me and Erica uh, decided we were going to rent... Um, uh, uh, Predator. Did you ever see the original Arnold Schwarzenegger Predator movie? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. badass. Yeah, it's a great. Th- movie. Dude, there is uh, there's a couple of things, a couple of things from Predator. There, there are important takeaways. Number one, that right at the beginning of that movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger takes a Bowie knife like 18 inches long and just stabs it all the way through somebody's chest and pins them to a fucking uh, to like a wall, like puts them up and pins them to that wall. And he goes, stick around. That's that's a terrible Schwarzenegger. <laughs> stick around. I can't do. I can't do that. Yeah, I can't. Either. Yeah, um, I've, I'm really bad at voices, but uh, yeah. So there was that, which was fucking amazing. And then the next thing was, there was a scene for like literally 45 seconds to a minute screen time. Every single person in that company just sprayed left to right like this, like 50 feet of uh, like a... Uh, Going to like bushes or something. Panning. It? Yeah, it well, yeah. into the jungle, but it was like every uh, member of that company, I don't know, five or six people or whatever. One of them, which was just carrying a, a minigun around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, like which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. And he also, that was the guy that had the cowboy hat and uh, and he was uh, he would chew tobacco and, and make funny remarks about that, but uh, uh, that that was cool. I mean, literally people like just emptying out, shooting at nothing, drop empty magazine, new magazine, which uh, is something that doesn't really happen, uh, you know, in real military situations. But uh, I don't you know. Also, don't get hunted by an alien. You don't know that. Real. You don't know that at all, you sir. You don't know that people don't shoot off into the jungle. Well. It was excessive. Yeah. <laughs> it was excessive, and it yeah. was funny. Uh, I've got a couple of shout-outs. Uh, Phil S., a man that likes to blow glass and eat ass. <laughs> Am I right, boys? Do you remember You remember Phil Sir? Uh, I guess I could say Phil Sertum on here, because I already did. That's his name. He, uh, he was at Forkfest, 
was this last year? Oh, Phil Sertum, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. He, that guy uh, was super, super cool. He's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, I think I was. I've been messaging with him. He's gonna be back there this year. So, hi, Phil. Hey, Phil. Uh, Joe E. Thanks for listening and thanks for your feedback. Why are we Why are we shouting him out just for fun? Just for just because. Well, because I came up with that line about blowing glass and eating ass. Does he blow glass? Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. I, th- I think like professionally. Well, he goes to like Very conventions cool. and stuff. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that's like straight up what he does. Mm-hmm. He'll clear it up. He'll he'll he should he'll let us know. He should blow glass and make make us something. And eat ass, ass and, and I'll pay for it. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Send me a pipe or something. I, mean, I didn't even smoke, but that'd be cool. Well, you could smoke tobacco out yeah, of it. Smoke whatever I want you out could of it. Uh, you could smoke kratom out of it, S- which wouldn't make sense because you don't smoke kratom. Send me a meth pipe, please. That would be awesome. I don't smoke meth, but like whatever, I'd have a meth pipe. Uh, you could put like a little rose in it, and you could give it to your <laughs> your girlfriend or whatever as yes. a nice present. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think we've got. Oh, you know what? We have a new patron, Mr. Uh, Daryl W. Perry, former two th- uh, 2016 former presidential candidate. Daryl W. Perry is one of our patrons. How cool is that? And also, That's dear very cool. dear friend of the show and dear friend of Adam and uh, and myself. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was a proper grammar. <laughs> a proper grammar, for sure. A <laughs> that was a proper grammar. <laughs> Daryl W. Perry. Yeah. I love that, um, well, we have some sim- you know, similarities and connections, I guess, to him. We're both from, from the same place, I guess. We're not same place, but same state. He's from Alabama, right? And uh, I'm pretty sure you told me that. But uh, we, we met him at Porkfest and um, mm-hmm. you know, spent a week hanging out with him. And I feel like we've been friends ever since. We're friends right. on Facebook now. We interact I don't. Lot. I don't think we're live. No. Keep keep t- I'm sorry, keep talking, Adam. That was that was the end of my sentence. <laughs> keep ta- <laughs> keep talking about <laughs> something else. <laughs> Let me see here. Uh da, da, da. Yeah, anyways, so Phil. That guy was cool. I want him to blow me a meth pipe and send it to me. <laughs> You've already said that. I I'm being hundred percent serious. That's You're how serious it is. It's worth doubling up on. Um I feel like all four of us should get meth pipes. Yeah. I mean, why not? Uh, so I will get the home addresses of uh, of the two uh, of the two co-hosts, and as well as the two panelists, and we will send them your we way. We will say them live on the air, right? And let everybody know where they live, and you can send them as much as whatever. We you are want. not live. Okay, so I'm sorry about that. I believe we're going live now. Yes. So mm, really, you just didn't hit the go live button. I thought I did. I thought you did too. I thought I saw you hit it. We are live now, uh, and Camp Barbershop live from the Martin Scurley Studios. How is everybody tonight? Uh, sorry, we started a good solid five minutes ago, and I thought the live stream was going. We're doing a live stream now. Uh, drop your comment in the thing. I don't know how interactive we'll be with the chat, but I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try to to keep up with that here and there. Uh, I know we've got some stuff to get to and talk about. Um, uh, 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 so just a, a quick repeat. Uh, Phil Sertum, blowing glass and eating ass. Thank you, Phil, for your service. Uh, yeah, and uh, Daryl W. Perry is and yeah. We are live. It looks like Daryl W. Perry is our um, our new patron, and he is at the buzz cut level of one dollar per podcast episode. So thank you, Daryl. Uh, Daryl, as we have already said, is a dear friend of ours. And uh, and we appreciate his service as well. And you can find out more about our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash ANCAP Barbershop. And I believe the forward slash is the one that leans to the right. <laughs> the top lean. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I got in an argument with somebody. Yeah, that's definitely the forward slash. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry you guys, you know, missed the intro and everything. Uh, but to... Too fucking bad. That's just how it is sometimes in life. It'd be like that sometimes. It'd be like that. I want to go over our uh, reviews just because I found this website that has like uh, accumulated our reviews from different uh, things. I don't know. I was just searching Google. I've never seen that. I was a Googling one day. I was a Googling. W A S A apostrophe space G O O G L I N apostrophe. I was a Googling. I was a Googling. The Ancap Barbershop. And uh, I, I, I just, I don't, I know, uh, I, I want to make sure that we catch, maybe that's why we don't get reviews anymore. Also, go review us uh, on iTunes or Stitcher or whatever, whatever podcatcher you're, you're on, I'm sure we're on it. 
And um, hey. and then when we don't read your review from a year, send us fucking angry messages. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. This the title of this is Quality by Antonio Cass C A S S. Another good one to add to the list. Thank you, Antonio. And he's got a five out of five rating. That's what's up. Word. Uh, great podcast by Fly Chicken. Great new libertarian podcast. Very responsive to audience and email and excellent audio quality. Well, that's great, Fly Chicken. I appreciate the comment about the audio quality. Great that you have noticed. And uh, c- considering that the title of this is Great New Libertarian Podcast, I don't know that we need to keep going. Uh, <laughs> but, okay, I, I don't think I've read this one because I think I know who this is. A great new podcast by Claybot93, who I'm pretty sure is Clayton Hunt. Uh, I'm only saying that because I see Clay. That could be anybody, just Claybot93. I don't know. I'm just assuming because he's a Lalbert and he's kind of in close circles with us. I just started listening to the podcast today, and already I'm impressed. The content is interesting, and the audio is good, which is uh, great because bad audio is a hate crime. And uh, since we're just, like, attributing things, uh, this is uh, by uh, uh, Obama, Barack Barack Hussein Obama, fantastic podcast. (laughs) Thanks for recommending Lava Flow. I'm excited to describe and add this to my rotation of Liberty Podcast. Great work. One yeah. thing you don't know about uh, Barack Hussein Obama is that he loves libertarian podcasts. Yeah, and totally. ours as well so as Lava Flow in particular. A- am I misunderstanding? Is that saying that thanks that we recommended Lava Flow and they're going to go listen to Lava Flow now? Or they got recommended by the Lava Flow to listen it to It says, us? listen, this is obvious. You read it really weird, man. Well, you, sh- you can read and you can see. Thanks for recommending, comma, Lava Flow, period. Okay. So, Look, man. thank like, you, Roger. I'm not in front of the computer screen like you. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else interesting? Did I? Oh, I never. I never said why we're not doing the book club. I s- kind of started. I don't even know how I got into. Well, anyways. So, oh yeah, Predator. <laughs> <laughs> so we're watching okay. Predator. Uh, Elsie has just laid down. Me and Erica. Uh, also, this show is brought to you by Bush non-alcoholic beer. Uh, the the beer of. Uh, of homosexual men, uh, but also the beer of ANCAP barbers, uh, who you know are alcoholics and can't drink anymore. Uh, I thought that would be funny, but that was just kind of sad. <laughs> so, so that's what made it funny. Once was. again, me and Erica were watching Predator. Okay. Elsie's just fallen asleep. We uh, we fall asleep on the couch, both of us, and we both wake up to Elsie standing over the corner of the couch vomiting oh profusely no. onto the couch and floor herself. Oh, no. I'm sorry about that. Whatever the fuck that was. Uh, you know, oh, this is a chat. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to monitor the live feed from there. Sorry about that. Uh, but I think I can still do it over here. We're figuring this shit out, folks, so bear with us. Uh, we're watching Predator. All right, so you wake up. <laughs> Elsie's throwing up everywhere. Elsie's throwing up everywhere. So th- um, this is the type of deal where we clean her up. We clean the couch up. We get her back in bed. And then I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go to bed. And then in five hours, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to work. No big deal. This is every other night for me. I don't sleep. I drink coffee and energy drinks and shit. Gross. And do what? It's like gross. Yeah, if there are, which I'm certain there are, like, uh, health effects of, of not... Um, sleeping enough i got them whatever they are just because i don't sleep enough but um but yeah so we're doing all that we get in bed and then uh at some point elsie comes in with us because then the next thing i know i'm waking up and elsie is like laying in bed turns toward is she's turned towards me and then she pukes all over my chest all over the bed all over herself just all over my chest and i'm like i don't wear a shirt or nothing when i sleep the kid was in the bed. I had like shorts on and shit, but I mean, just, just all over. Really gross stuff. And uh, uh, still, haven't taken a shower between <laughs> now and then. By the fun. way, <laughs> because <laughs> whenever, fun. whenever you go to sleep for five hours to get up to work, you don't stop in the middle of that to take a shower. You wipe that shit off with a uh, 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 a rag soaked in hot water, and you keep fucking going. This is the life of of, of a parent. So so that happened, right? So we get up, we like clean the bed off, put like a blanket down, clean her up, definitely clean me up. We all lay back down. And the first thing I'm saying, all right, so we're putting her like, see if she wants to go in her bed. And Erica's like, no, you fucking retard. What if she fucking throws up again and she chokes to death? You'll feel like a piece of shit. I was like, yeah, I guess yeah. so. 
So so we didn't do that. Um, she laid down in the bed with us, and then an hour or two later, uh, she puked all over herself again, and we got up and we did the same thing. And this happened uh, the initial time, then twice when we got in bed throughout Dang. the course of this very short night. So uh, I, I, I feel great now because I've had a two-hour nap. I got home from work, and I was going to do a bunch of show prep and research this stuff and read um, – read the third chapter that we're up to of Anatomy of the State by Murray Rothbard. But uh, long story, not long story short, long story long, because there's been a lot of tangents. We're not doing that tonight for the uh, because I slept. But you know what? I'm here, and I'm lively, and you know, it's, it's worth it because of that. And it's not going anywhere. So, yeah. Do you got any new stuff, Adam? I feel like I've been talking a lot. You have been, but that's okay. You're sick? I am sick. And you're gay. That that too. I've You're sick out. with gayness. I've come out of the closet, and that's made me very sick. No, um, I'm not gay, but <laughs> I am very sick. You're just disgusted with yourself. Yeah, I know. No, no, I had to go to the doctor today. I got a shot and everything. I got a shot like right in my ass, and uh, those are fun. They burn. Yeah, no, like it's like uncomfortable sitting in the stool if anyone's watching me wiggle around and shit. I could have gotten you a more comfortable chair had That's I okay. had I known that I didn't know you had a booster shot or whatever. Yeah, it's cool though. We 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 doing it. We're all good. <laughs> we do we doing it live. We do we doing it live uh from the Martin Screlly Studios yeah. if I haven't mentioned. <laughs> um have I have I have we talked about that on an actual episode? I don't think so. There's not much to say other than we've dubbed our recording space to be the Martin Screlly Studios. Until we think of something even funnier than that. Uh, so send your suggestions in. Um, yeah. I've interrupted you again, Adam. That, it, that was it. Don't worry. You're sick. You don't feel good. Yeah. It's hard. Like, I don't know. You can probably tell how nasally I sound and shit like that, too. Yeah. You got to yeah. do, uh, which I'm, uh, you got to do, like, vocal exercises and get your, get your, like, raise your soft palate before you start recording. And, you know. <laughs> Get no. you busted loose. <laughs> I, and I'm the worst yeah. about not doing stuff because my voice will be all fucked up and creaky. And yeah. And, uh, uh, oh, did you listen to the 36th episode yet? The one I recorded no. by myself? No, I'm going to, though. I promise. Yeah, I want notes on that. Yeah. Uh, it seemed to be well received. Uh, people that don't usually listen mm-hmm. uh, listened and, and all that stuff. So, and, mm-hmm. and they told me it was good. So, well yeah. You recently did another show, too, didn't you? I did. Uh, I did a show called Uncivil Liberty, which is actually a bunch of ANCAPs from northern Alabama, like real close to here. I think one or two of them, or I think two of them are Madison and one of them is um, Decatur, which is very close. At Madison borders on Huntsville. It's pretty much the same place, uh, yeah. whatever. But yeah, I did their show, and uh, that link is, that was live streamed, and the recording is up. That link is on the Ancap Barbershop page, or you can go to Uncivil Liberty, and you can find it there. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Those guys are cool. At some point, uh, we're going to record an episode with them. I was actually supposed to do that this past um, this past Saturday, but it ended up not uh, just, just scheduling conflicts, not being able to happen. Blahdy, 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 blah, blahdy, blah. But uh, also, oh, I've got some cool news for you. Nick right. Hazelton, uh, I think I told you, like, through, like, in December, he wanted to record with us. And yeah, I, yeah. I never messaged you back. I got on busy his with show? Work. On, on Yakin? Yakin. Okay, Yakin cool. with Nick. Yeah. So, uh, whenever n- you do that, make sure I'm Next there. Monday. Next Monday. Can you make it? Yes. Sweet. Cool. Next Monday, which I believe is the 19th, uh, today, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. No, today's the 5th. Today's the 5th. So, yes. a week from the 5th, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12? 12. Well, whatever it is, it's uh, mu- it should be a. Mu- I'll get with him. It should be a week from yeah. today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's the plan. Uh, yeah, we're gonna record a uh, yakin with Nick, which I'm really stoked on. I dig his show. Um, he did he did his own solo episode about the Parkland shooter. Yeah, and uh, and it, it's really interesting listening to mine, which he gave me a lot of praise for mine, and um, a lot of praises due his way. Just because, I don't know, we came at it from a completely different angle. He came at it from kind of um, like a psychological mm-hmm. angle. It was yeah. really, really interesting. I came at it strictly politics and logistics, I guess, is mm-hmm. the best way I know how to describe it. But uh, let's get started. Let's get into what we're talking about today. And uh, that is this guy, um, 
this guy in Gadsden, I guess, Etowah County, mm-hmm. who's uh, been arrested uh, for for all this weed butter. Uh, uh, so, so I'll just get into the name of this article. This man arrested on six charges four days after publicly criticizing Etowah County Sheriff. Where is um, Etowah County from now? So it's pretty close, right? It's yeah, North well Alabama, right? It's like, yeah, it's like, it's North Alabama. I mean, it's, I don't think you could, I'm not looking at a map. Yeah, I guess you would have to get down towards like Birmingham. Okay. Mag- like like in between Birmingham and Montgomery before you can start saying Central Alabama and, and Gadsden is north of that, north okay. of Birmingham. Uh, yeah, Matthew Qualls is the name of this gentleman. He's being held in the Etowah County Jail as of Tuesday morning. I guess it's last Tuesday. Uh, a 20-year-old man, and, and this is uh, from AL.com, a 20-year-old man was arrested last week and charged with drug trafficking four days after AL.com published comments he made criticizing Etowah County Sheriff Todd Entrecken. And I'm assuming that's, I mean, I don't really care, Entrecken, Entrecken, Entrecken. i sure that's a, that's a fucking weird name. It is a weird name. Entrecken. Go get a real job, Todd. Um Matthew Qualls questioned why Entrecken paid him to mow the lawn at his. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm distracted by the tra- uh, by the uh, the chat over here because I see my boy Brando the barber is watching. Hey, Brandon, glad you can join us. What, uh, up, dog? what up, dog? Let's see. Matthew Qualls questioned why Entrecken paid him to mow the lawn at his personal home in 2015 using taxpayer funds allocated for the feeding of inmates in the county jail. And Trecken confirmed that he personally pocketed some of the funds. So you could see where this is going. And I think I think a lot of people just kind of go like, oh, what do I care, like, what they eat? They're fucking criminals, which right. a lot of them, a lot of, uh, like, I guess by the law are, but a lot of them are, are peaceful people that right. are drug users or, you know, prostitutes or shit like that, people that we, shouldn't be uh, in cages. Yeah, we t- talked a little bit about the Etowah County Sheriff, like, Several episodes ago, like a long time ago, probably like a year ago, it was last summer, I think, and um, about the how he was pocketing money that um, was supposed to go to inmates, you know, uh, I mean, uh, however they budget for their food, and um, and he was kind of in some hot water about that, like locally, and uh, we it was when we were talking about um, local politicians being corrupt and stuff. Um, yeah, so I think that's interesting that, that this guy also criticized him locally on Alabama.com, and then four days later they bust him on some really, really questionable stuff. Right. So, yeah, just uh, before Adam so rudely interrupted me, just to continue on with what I was saying, uh, I, I think the, the gut reaction is go like, I don't care what that guy does with that money. I want those people to starve anyway. They're fucking criminals, and they deserve to be in a cage. That's, that's not a good reaction. That's not a good reaction, and the number one thing that I, that, that I would think is like, well, wh- whatever you think that money should go to should be up to you. It should not be up to this, this uh, fucking power-hungry control freak. That's your money, and this is being stolen from you. And he's using it to pay people to mow his grass. He can he can get an honest job, and he can fucking uh, use that money to pay somebody to cut his fucking grass. Or he can take a hundred bucks and go to Home Depot buy a fucking push mower, and he can cut the shit himself. But what he can't do morally is take my fucking money and use it, or you know, take 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 public money, whatever. Yeah. Now uh, now as far as uh, as far as legally by Alabama law, can he do that? Yes, he absolutely can. Uh, uh, apparently. And and I and, and I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the ins and outs of this stuff. Um, let's see here. As of Tuesday morning, Qualls faced six charges and was being held on fifty five thousand dollars in bail in the Etowah County Jail, which in Trekin oversees. Qualls had not been arrested before, according to state records. So that guy's got him right where the fuck he wants him. Mm-hmm. Uh, police say the arrest began with an anonymous tip. Officers with the Rainbow City Police Department, uh, I'm sorry, department rather, and the Etowah County Drug Enforcement Unit arrested Qualls on February 22nd after responding to an anonymous call reporting the odor of marijuana emanating from within a Rainbow City apartment, according to the police report. The Drug Enforcement Unit, which is a team of agents assigned from the Sheriff's Office and other agencies accompanied the Rainbow City Police Officers to the apartment because they were responding to a drug-related call, and I, who knows where the, um, where that phone call. I mean, it was some probably somebody in his apartment complex, 
who knows but uh that's a really really shitty reason like yeah. i can i can get it if it's like like noxious chemicals or something or something like that you know if it's something that's a, a danger to somebody if it's just like oh i smell weed yeah. let's see if we can get somebody that's, you know, thrown in a cage over there it's just fucking retarded right that's that's a bad neighbor and a fucking terrible person shame on you uh let's see here People say the arrest being okay. Uh, drug related call. The officers knocked on the door, and when one of Qual's friends opened it, the officer could smell marijuana and saw a small quantity of the drug sitting out in the open inside the apartment, according to the arrest report. They added that Qual's was cooperative throughout the entire process. Scrolling down. Officers arrested Qual's after they allegedly found 1,000 and 42 grams of cannabis in his possession inside the apartment. <laughs> Excuse me. This is where it gets interesting. Uh, according to an arrest warrant signed by Entrecken. 1,042 grams. 1,042 grams. Rainbow City Police uh, Captain John Bryant said that his department only charged Qualls with second-degree marijuana possession possessing drug paraphernalia and felony possession of a controlled substance, namely a few Adderall pills that were not prescribed to him. But records on the Etowah County Sheriff's Office website show that in Trekin's office charged Qualls with three additional crimes, another paraphernalia charge, another felony possession of a controlled substance charge, and felony drug trafficking. Penalties for drug trafficking are extremely steep in Alabama, where people have been in prison for, uh, for life for the crime. Which is uh, just a, a cry and shame. Uh, let's see. Etowah County Sheriff Todd and Trekin says that he personally keeps any money allocated to feed inmates at the county's jail. Pictured here, uh, that does not end up being used for that purpose. The sheriff's office uh, chose to bring the additional charges, despite the fact that spokeswoman Natalie Barton said via email Monday that the case against Qualls belongs to and was initiated by the Rainbow City Police Department and the Etowah County Sheriff's Office did not have any involvement in the arrest of Mr. Qualls. So there's a lot of confusing, conflicting information here. Uh, the police report states that the officers did not, in fact, find 1,042 grams or just under 2.3 pounds of marijuana buds or leaves, which is a, a, a lot, uh, an amount only slightly above the 2.2-pound threshold that elevates possession to trafficking. And <coughs> pardon me, uh, you know, surely incurs, uh, you know, higher, higher, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. what am I trying to say, Adam? Uh, consequences, yeah. legal consequences. Let's see. According to the report, the on they only found a few grams of actual intact smokable marijuana, but they also found a large container of cannabis infused butter, which Qualls and his friends were allegedly making when the police arrived at the door, which would probably create quite a smell. That's just me interjecting. Uh, Qualls told police they made the infused butter by putting 14 grams, in contrast to 1,042. 14 grams, that is an, a half an ounce of pot and uh, five cups of butter into an appliance called a magic butter machine, which police also seized from the apartment. So, so this guy took half an ounce of pot and uh, and made butter with it, cooked it in butter uh, for, for the purpose of, of making edibles. Um, so, I mean, he, he took some, he took a plant that doesn't have a whole lot of negative health connotations opposed, yeah, maybe like from smoking it, but, and then he's making it into a form to where you can eat it kind of doing God's work here, don't you think? <laughs> and uh and he's uh and he's he's getting he's getting thrown away for that. Uh our guys just go ahead. I was going to say I think that's what exactly did you say? I don't know if you got to that part yet, but um the way that let's see if I can find it real quick. The okay. Um Phil Sims, deputy commander of the Etowah County Drug Enforcement Unit, said Monday that the unit has a different take. Once that marijuana is mixed with the butter, then the whole butter becomes marijuana. Then the whole butter becomes marijuana. And then Science. And that's what they weighed. Like, that's insane, first of all. Like, obviously, 
he, he could probably defend himself if he like paid for a lawyer and then you know probably get off on much lesser but like that's going to cost him so much money it would be ridiculous you yeah. know what i mean but i don't know i mean using that logic like like let's create an infinite money scheme where we take one gold flake and throw it in a bunch of water and or a bunch of butter. Yeah, and then oh, dude, we got a bunch of gold. Yeah, you know, we have one thousand forty-two ounces. It's perfect you of know? gold. Yeah, because it was mixed with butter. Using that logic, why not? You know, this dude, this uh, this this guy who who, who is attributed to that quote uh, is probably been watching too much Full Metal Alchemist because <laughs> that's some that's some funny shit. It's like yeah. it's like oh, this is a science experiment we're doing with these different elements, and let's like start off by saying a prayer and doing Kamehamehas and shit. <laughs> that show's fucking awesome, by the way. Don't. Me knock it. <laughs> oh, also, uh, Brando says that will stink up an entire house. He's talking about making can of butter, which I'm fucking sure it would. Uh, let's see here. Our guys just charged him with possession. Bryant said Monday, you wouldn't add the butter with that. It should be just the amount of the marijuana. You can't add the butter. It would just be the marijuana alone. Yeah, it's fucking butter. Yeah. Uh, Phil Sims, deputy commander of. Oh, this is yeah. What I just read. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Should I skip that? I mean, what you, can did read you? It. you can read it again. Phil Sims, deputy commander of the Etowah County Drug Enforcement Unit, said Monday that the unit has a different take once. <laughs> it's worth repeating. Once that mm-hmm. marijuana was mixed with the butter, then the whole butter becomes marijuana, and that's what we wait. See, even just saying marijuana over and over makes you sound fucking retarded. Yeah, it makes you. Yeah. Does it not? It's not ma- marijuana. Is is what it's like a, a Mexican uh, 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 tobacco mm. plant, right? Yeah. It's like a slang term for fucking cannabis. And you know, it's just like some fucking. I don't, I don't know. I'm just picturing some cop who's who who just you know refers to every incident as an altercation, and he's like, you know, the marijuana. Uh, it's you know fucking killing the kids. We are ki- you know like them. <laughs> them uh, they're selling the kids yeah. CBD <laughs> candies to get them <laughs> high. Yeah, he has no idea what he's talking about. Very clear. Like it, it's it's just all over that sentence. You can tell he has no idea what he's talking about. Uh, Qualls could not be reached for comment because he remained incarcerated. But his mother declined to comment when reached by phone Monday. His attorney, Sam Bone, did not respond to a request for comment. Sam Bone. Sam Bone. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like we could get into that. Sam Bone. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I just uh, wish I had a name that was cool as Sam Bone. I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to think. No, I don't, I don't have anything. Sam. Sam Bone. Oh, God. What a wasted opportunity. It is unclear whether Qualls lived in the Rainbow City apartment. He said in a phone interview earlier this month before his arrest that he lived in Gadsden. His address is listed on the three warrants and Trekkin signed for his uh, for his arrest last week. What was that? As being in the Cherokee County town of Center. What the fuck was that sound? Dude, you are you're a rookie with these sounds. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, guys. I've got to figure out how to make my computer shut up. On February 18th, AL.com published a story about how some Alabama sheriffs pocket tens of thousands of dollars worth of public funds that were allocated by federal, state, and municipal governments to feed county jail inmates. They argue that the practice is legal because of a decades-old law that they interpret as saying they can keep any money for inmate feeding that they do not spend on food. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to finish this article. I'm going to skip over, actually, to the one that they just referenced uh, but the link to this one will, as always, be in the show notes. Oh, boy. Uh, Alabama sheriffs pocket tens of thousands of taxpayer dollars allocated to feed inmates. Uh, da, 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 da. Between 2014 and 2016, the sheriff of one Alabama county pocketed more than $110,000. That's 14, 15, 16. So that's over the course of three years. That's um, that's that's more than most honest people just make, you know, as, as normal wages. And, and this is uh, $110,000 worth of excess taxpayer dollars his office received to feed inmates in the county jail he oversees. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean... I don't know how you can you can do that and just go like, well, there's a law that says it's okay. So I mean, yeah. obviously nobody cares. Uh, and I, I imagine after this story, maybe we'll maybe something will happen and we'll see this law repealed. But I don't know. People have been talking about this for a while. Yeah, like we've like we've mentioned, maybe people don't care. Maybe they would just assume that uh, 
that the that the inmates starve and, and sheriffs put all that fucking money in their pocket. But it just seems like such a, a, a perfect example of why fucking socialism doesn't work. Is because you have uh, you have people like anytime you have a controlled economy with where things aren't controlled by the market and by prices, you end up with people that control the flow of resources. And guess what? A lot of those people do. They take that shit and they direct the flow of resources to benefit themselves. Economic calculation problem. Google that shit. Uh, do you think if that Matt guy would have like? Dropped his his fucking you know butter into a swimming pool. He would have been charged for like ten thousand. <laughs> ten thousand <laughs> gallons of marijuana. <laughs> they uh, yeah they'd be publicly executed. <laughs> fucking uh, down in Montgomery or yep. some shit. Uh, Give him an old hanging or something. Oh my god! Uh, another Alabama sheriff paid a teenager to mow, and this is who we're talking about here. This uh, and and what the fuck his name is? And Andrew Crin or whatever. I don't know. Another Alabama sheriff uh, paid a teenager to mow his lawn in 2015 using checks that drew from funds that were allocated for inmate food that ended up in one of his personal accounts. They contend that they are not breaking the law by taking thousands of federal, state, and municipal tax dollars that they receive. See, this is what kills me. Just like, we're not breaking the law. It's obviously immoral what you're doing. You're obviously like the biggest fucking piece of shit. Yep. Just uh, like like uh, th- like I understand they're prisoners and you've got to understand that a lot of these people are in there for victimless crimes. They're in there for fucking uh, peaceful drug activity. And, you know, they're in there for prostitution or gambling or some shit like that. You know, not not all of them, but but one way or the, uh, one way or the other, if it's our money, why the fuck would we want to just send it to go into so- like I would rather just keep that money right. than it to go in this sheriff's fucking pocket for him to pay kids to mow his lawn with him. Yeah. Do God knows what else. Fuck this guy, dude. The law is at the center of a lawsuit jointly filed January 5th by the Southern Center for Human Rights and the Alabama Appleseed Center for Law and Justice. The two centers sued 49 Alabama county sheriffs over their refusal for a period of several months to produce public records showing whether, and if so, by how much, they have personally profited from funds allocated for feeding people in their jails, according to a statement they released last month. They're just like, yeah, we're... I mean, obviously, they're not going to fucking talk about it. They're not going to tell you right. how much money and where it's going. Uh, because it's going to fucking bullshit. What's up, Roger? We're hating on cops down here in Alabama. Uh, the center contends that state law does not, in fact, allow the sheriffs to keep any money allocated to feed inmates. They argue that such an interpretation of the law establishes perverse incentives leads to the misuse of tens of thousands of taxpayer dollars annually and ultimately results in sheriffs serving inmates minimal amounts of low-quality food in county jails across the state. Our position is that this practice is illegal now, but it's clear that many sheriffs believe it's legal for them to do this. Aaron Lippman, a staff attorney at the Southern Center for Human Rights, told AL.com Thursday. Clearly, this is a practice which is problematic because it creates an incentive for sheriffs to spend as little as possible on feeding folks. And obviously, when a minimal amount of money is approved for something and less than that is spent, the quality suffers. Monroe County Sheriff Thomas Tate recently provided the Southern Center for Human Rights with copies of handwritten ledgers detailing exactly how much money his office received from federal, state, and municipal governments to feed inmates in 2014, 2015, and 2016. And what was done with those funds? The documents show that the Monroe County Sheriff's Office received a total of $423,364.60 over that three-year period to pay for a total. That's almost half a million dollars to pay for a total of 83,878 days worth of meals for inmates. A measure referred to as inmate days in the county's jail of that money one hundred and ten thousand four hundred and fifty nine dollars and seventy seven cents was declared excess and paid to Sheriff Thomas Tate, according to the ledgers. And of course, the implication here is just they're like, well, I mean, you know, we did everything we could. We bought them a bunch of nutritious food and uh, this is just what we happen to have left over. Uh, Fucking retards. The amount of excess funds Tate received rose each year, despite the fact that the number of inmate days fell each year and the per diem amounts paid to his office. 
uh, $1.80 per state inmate per day, $5 per municipal inmate per day, and $10 per federal inmate per day. Did not change between 2014 and 2016. In 2014, he pocketed less than $29,000. In 2016, he personally, personally received more than $44,000 as of the 2010 U.S. Census. Monroe County was home to just 23,068 residents. Forty-four thousand dollars is uh, in in the course of a year is good money for somebody. You know, maybe not if you're living in New York or California or something, but for the majority of Americans, like that's not bad. You can live on that just fine, and that is um, just a portion of of what this fucking asshole just stole from taxpayers. Uh, tax victims, rather. I do it just like the law tells us to. That's and, and the law. I, I'm and, and look. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. I haven't. I haven't looked at this law, but it doesn't sound like it tells you just to take excess money. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't sound like it's like oh, you know, spend as little as possible so you can so you can fucking line your own pockets. The amazing thing is like, B- buy more food. How did that become a thing? Like like someone created that law and thought there's no way that would be abused. Right. How, and how did someone read that and think, no, nah, no, no one will abuse that, you know? N- no way that can go wrong. Dude, they probably just didn't give a fuck. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, there, is, there's, uh, there, there isn't a whole lot of competition between different systems of law. You just have the, the monopolized version. That's what we got. And hopefully one day it'll change. Uh, Etowah County Sheriff Todd in Trekin says that he has advocated for the county commission to handle the funds used to feed inmates in his jail. But that has yet to happen. And in the meantime, he says he keeps the funds that remained after his inmates have been fed. The law says it's a personal account, and that's the way I've always done it, and that's the way the law reads, and that's the way I do business, he said in a phone interview Friday. Fucking business. That, 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 that's how the law is written. Uh, there's, let's see here. Okay, so thi- this, this kind of gets into... How uh, uh, how this kind of came about again? I mowed his yard in his parents' yard. I was out there pretty much every day, Monday through Friday, from the end of the school year into the summer of 2015. Qualls said, "What? Who mows the lawn every day? Right? What are you doing? Guys got a lot of property. Um, and when you're getting paid hourly, that job's gonna take a minute. <laughs> I saw that in the corner of the checks it said food provision, and a couple people I knew came through the jail." And they say they got meat maybe once a month, and every other day it was just beans and vegetables. I put two and two together and realized that the money could have gone towards some meat or something. So obviously these folks are not, uh, uh, these inmates, to be fair, are not getting anywhere near like, like what it would take to, to keep a human person healthy. Meat once enough, and then just sh- like probably the shittiest beans and vegetables you can imagine doesn't doesn't cut it uh but yeah there's there's more if you guys would uh would like to read that we will have this link in the show notes as well brandon griffith says why am i not surprised by any of this and he's got (laughs) he's got a little cop head emoji and then a poop emoji that's great i during the recording of this podcast need to just go over here and like this real quick um but yeah what's what's your what's your takeaway from this whole thing, Adam. I don't know. That's. Uh, I mean, I'm not surprised by people abusing power that they've given themselves. You know, uh, it's just going to keep happening. It's. Not, I'm sure it's not the first time. It's probably one of the first times it's been made public like that, and people right. have been uh, outraged by it. But I doubt it'll be the last time either. You know, I imagine. I mean, Etowah County's not fucking big. You know, I bet it happens in every fucking county. You know, at least fi- you know half of them in Alabama and half of them in fucking you know every bordering state. Sure, you know, right. why not? Like. It's I it's. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I mean atro- atrocities like that. Like obviously morally abhorrent things like that happen. I'm sure everywhere, and it's just continuing to happen, and people are just getting away with it. And, you know, all done by, by our government. You know, this is this is what happens when uh you leave your your protection, your security, and your rights enforcement yeah. up to up to socialism. It's like like I've explained. It just goes back to the economic calculation problem. You create positions of power. You create a separate class of individual, and there's a uh, pretty decent chances that those people are going to abuse that power. So that's all I have to say. Uh, Do you think if you were in, like 
I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you no, think go ahead. if you were in a position of power like that, do you think you would have used it? Because, I mean, like, I don't, I like to think that most people are all pretty, you know, like, people try right. to be pretty nice, but for some reason, when you, whenever you put these people in this position of where they have tons of power, did they, did they start making these decisions that, that they they change in their head. And they're like, maybe it's not so bad. I'm just doing what I can do, you know? Did you ever watch Larkin Rose's video? I think it was called If, if I Were King or If You Were King or something like that. No, I haven't. So, um... And this this isn't a hundred percent applicable because this is talking about be like being a literal king, mm-hmm. as opposed to a sheriff or something like that. Um, but he basically talks about how like everybody has in their mind how they will be altruistic and how they can mm-hmm. uh, efficiently and compassionately distribute resources uh, if they were in power, and how you know it's yeah. obvious how these people are doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. And then, like, one of the first things that got into is, like, you take somebody like that and you put them in power, and then uh, what do you do whenever somebody fails to pay you tribute? Mm-hmm. Whenever somebody refuses to pay taxes, you can't be compassionate towards them. You can't let them get away with that, because if you do, your whole system falls apart. Mm-hmm. You cease to be a government. You lose power. If people realize they that they can just to. decide, they can voluntarily decide whether or not uh, to contribute to your cause, right? then then it, it just becomes a business, mm-hmm. which is what I would prefer, but uh, that's living in the free market is a lot more difficult for, you know, some, some, you know, right. large centralization of resources or power or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you, you can't, you, you gotta beat the shit out of those people. I, yeah. I like to, th- like, I've heard places, or I mean, I've heard things where people say, like, if, if someone says the words, well, if I had it my way, it would be like this or whatever. Usually if right. someone says that, you can just assume that they're, that they would not be any way different, you know? Yeah. And, um, because the crazy thing is, like, I like to think that I'm pretty altruistic and pretty charitable and, you know, like, so on and so on. Like, I wouldn't fuck people over, but I would fit uh, – why would I be any different than that? Like, that kind of freaks me out. Like, dang, yeah. maybe, maybe I would um, – my fucking mind would start changing if I got, you know, in a right. really powerful position when I started stepping on folks more. I, well, yeah, I mean, it probably would. But also, like, yeah. I, I'm just going to recognize that I'm not necessarily – like, I'm not a, a bad person morally. Like, I'm not out to hurt people. Yeah. But I'm definitely not smart enough to fucking control an economy. Nobody is. Right, yeah. You know, even even uh, even for these you know these sheriff uh, sheriff's offices and stuff like that, mm. it, it's too it's too much power for a small amount of people, uh, not being subject to the whims of their funding, right? Right. Not being subject to uh, being a company where people voluntarily pay you, uh, and then and then you take that all the way up to something like the office of the president of the United States. Like how anybody thinks that's a fucking good idea is beyond me. Right. To take one fucking monkey and give him that much power, I don't. I don't know. Um, do you have anything else to no. to add to that? Well, look, guys, uh, we're ending that segment and we're gonna move on to our next one, uh, which is the best way that I know how to do something like that. Uh, <laughs> it's an awkward segment without <laughs> without like it's, it's easy. Just go. Well, oh, we gotta take a break. But uh, I don't know how to do that with a live stream. I guess you just split it up. But that sounds like a pain in the ass. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, Hillary backers <laughs> spam Bernie groups with kitty porn. That is uh, that's a great title for an article, uh, except the fact that it's based in reality. <laughs> uh, Wash. It'd, be a, it'd be a great title if this was the Onion, but it's not. So this uh, this is the New York Post. Um, <laughs> Which I received a lot of criticism uh, for reading from like two two CNN articles yeah. on that one I did, which it's like it's not I, I don't know I, I guess I guess I should choose better sources I'm not I'm not gonna take CNN at their word for anything they have to say but right they were just articles I was reading from from for general information the general timeline so my bad y'all um, continuing on uh, Washington. A member of a group supporting Hillary Clinton staged a cyber attack using pornography to infect Facebook pages promoting Bernie Sanders, leading the social media network to take them down temporarily. At least eight pro-Sanders groups, including Bernie Believers, Bernie or Bust, Bernie Sanders for President, and Bernie Sanders is my hero, which is, which is adorable. Uh, were disabled between 9 p.m. and midnight Monday, according to Heavy.com. 
The social media groups had about 225,000 members combined. The pages were inundated with pornographic photos, including pedophilia, uh, and automatically taken down by Facebook as inappropriate content. Uh, we had what looked like a kitty porn posted in one of our groups today. A kitty porn. <laughs> that's the that that's a <laughs> quote. This isn't my takeaway or the article. We had what looked like a kitty porn, a kitty porn posted in one of our groups today. It sounds s- it, like it doesn't sound menacing when you say it like no, that. No, it doesn't. It sounds like something much nicer than it obviously is. Uh, One of them kitty porns. Said Sanders supporter Erica Lib- Libanow, ugh, Libanow told Heavy.com, I reported that one seriously made me want to vomit. So, um, which obviously Erica is not aroused by the child pornography, which is good. One pro Hillary Clinton group, Bros for Hillary, which God damn, dude, <laughs> if you're in a group and, and look, <laughs> look, I know, I know, I know for like anybody that might be watching the stream. Uh, or you know, watching this the the recording in the future. I I'm an ANCAP, and we're all autistic. And there's um, there's the, the you know there there's a lot of of cringe that rightfully should be pointed our way. Um, we just have consistent you know ethics and and morals and principles. But uh, but if you are in a group called uh uh, uh see I lost where I was. What was it Bros, Bros for, for Hillary? Hillary yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. I, oh, man. If I found out that, like, my best friend in the world... If, was, like, was Jacob a, was yeah. in Bros. Hillary, you'd kick him out. I'd be like, dude, I can't hang out with you, dude. You'd be like, you doing? can't live here. Yeah. And it's not... I mean, like, the that's just the lamest fucking thing. You like, there's no other way to say it other than that's fucking lame. You can be a full-on, tanky, like, authoritarian communist. Yeah. And I won't... Mis- like, I... I, I could have some respect for you. I have friends that are you know that are ancoms and yeah, shit. That but that's bad. But <laughs> dude, if you're in a group called Bros for Hillary, fucking delete that shit, dude. That is get oh that off God. of your page. I didn't need to know things like that existed. That's so fucking awful. Oh my God. Uh Bros for Hillary. Bros for Hillary. <laughs> Apologized for the attack and blamed a rogue member or I'm sorry, a rogue former member, rather, who acted on his own. Last night, a former member by the name of Casey Champagne, which sounds like a fucking fake name. That's a pseudo name. That sounds like a sock account. Yeah. uh, Decided to engage in harassing behavior towards Facebook uh, groups of Bernie Sanders and posted about it in the in the (laughs) Pros for Hillary Facebook group. The group said (laughs) in Statement Tuesday, "This was not promoted or supported by the leadership of B4H." I guess that they get you just get tired of hearing bros for Hillary over and over, and they shorten it, which is what I would do. Uh, nor were we immediately aware of this conduct. We removed the offending posts and members as soon as possible. All the Bernie Facebook groups were up and running again Tuesday, but members took out their anger on Clinton, <laughs> 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 which is what you should do. It's it's all her fault. Um, Clearly. One group, uh, uh, World for Bernie, tweeted, shame on at Hillary Clinton and uh, at HFA. We'll never support her. We are hashtag Bernie or bust, which is only slightly less cringy. Um, I will I will give the Bernie people that. You are, Hillary is up here, <laughs> and you're like right here on the cringe level. Uh, it's still a bad idea. Clinton has struggled to woo young voters, and the cyber blackout made some Sanders supporters even more anti-Clinton. Sanders supporters, uh, Ganera Clay, I'm sorry, Sanders supporter Ganera Clay tweeted, just made a $50 donation to hashtag Bernie Sanders in support of Hillary and her hashtag Bernie blackout. You have to be some kind of evil to post bull and report us. This is great. Um, So... My question is, do you think uh, Hillary Clinton gets, like, legitimate sexual gratification from sucking off baby penises? Yeah, if we took one thing away from this article, it is that she's definitely into, into to diddling kids. What about, what about the, uh, well, yeah, but I mean, what about, <laughs> like, um, like th- that is a legitimate thing with, uh, well, okay, this I assume is a legitimate thing with, uh, because I've heard it over and over with, like, some Jewish circles, like uh, and how that's many, how many Jewish circles do you know? I don't 
know. There's a bunch. There's Orthodox and Reformed. I, I don't. I don't have a clue. I don't I know mean, that uh, much. I thought you meant like cliques that like you're hanging out with like some of your Jewish friends. Yeah, some of my some of my Jew buddies uh, <laughs> talk about uh, uh, sucking baby penises after uh, you know circumcisions. Of course, that's what they do. They openly talk about that, as is tradition in no. the Jewish community. <laughs> No, and this isn't a, anything against Jews. This is against individuals. That's a kind of a weird thing to do, uh, but but yeah, have you have you heard that shit about like after they circumcise babies, they like suck the blood out with their mouths? No, I actually thought you were joking. I didn't no, oh. no, no, I'm not joking. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought that was a fucking joke, dude. Holy shit, it's that's not real. That can't be real, dude. That's I'm not, pretty sure. I'm thing. pretty sure that it's real. Because I've heard about it over the course of my life, like a bunch of different times. It's not like some shit that I heard on the school bus, like, um, like uh, what was a good one of the? Oh yeah, uh, all Chinese girls got sideways vaginas. <laughs> you remember heard, that? No, I thought that was true for, and I, as far as I know, it very well may be. I heard that when I was an adult, like like after like I was in school, someone told me that because I had a, an Asian girlfriend, and uh, but she you was had like, an Asian girlfriend. Yeah, but she was only like half Asian, so we joked that her vagina was like slanted. And not all the way sideways, <laughs> like um, not a like a not a this way. Th- okay, it, it like was a like a, it was like a forward slash. Yeah, it was like a forward. We've slash. gone full circle. Um, <laughs> Patreon dot com, <laughs> half Asian, half white <laughs> vagina, <laughs> and cat barber shop. So that is a perfect uh, example yes. of of what we loosely in the the comedy world, and I'd say loosely, loosely not not we loosely say this, but we are loosely in the comedy world. That is what we call a callback. Yep. And uh, Adam, that was excellent. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no. It's, uh, so I guess, I guess, just seriously, in summary, uh, what? I, okay, so put somebody else at the helm. That say this is libertarians do this. Do you, what? What do you think then? Does it change anything? No, I, I mean, think it does. I think it would be pretty fun. Uh, well, okay. It, it, I guess I guess this involves people having you know like uh, like kitty porn in their possession. I don't think there's yeah. any legitimate use of that. I don't think right. like the government using that to catch right. you know to entrap people is like like they in turn have to create those websites and mm-hmm. lure people in. I don't think any of that right. stuff's good. No, I guess all jokes aside, like a very se- a serious take on it. Um, I would say I mean most likely it was like you know a burn uh, you know. A bunch of fucking 16, 17-year-old Bernie Sanders supporters versus a bunch of 15, 16, 17-year-old Hillary Clinton supporters who all just got into a meme war that or, went too far. You yeah, know? or people in, in their, their 40s, you know, possibly. Maybe. Um, I, I would bet that there were just fucking younger kids who, like I said, took it too far. And I definitely think you're taking it too far because I don't think shit like that needs to be on the internet. Like, I mean, right. just because even if no one on, you know, there was was interested in and everybody was just like, oh fuck, everyone closed their computer or whatever and moves on with their lives, you know, right. and then some some kid gets in trouble or whatever. You shouldn't put that stuff up just because there's a good chance that, you know, I don't know, what if some fucking dude was was on there and didn't even know he was into shit like that and then you just triggered something in his fucking mind, you know what I mean? Put him down a dark path and now and now you got someone who needs, you know, who needs help, <laughs> you know. I don't know. It seems like a a bad move. You shouldn't. You should, it, it's crossing the line, as far as I know. Yeah. No. Yeah. I. I. I think it is too. I mean, mm-hmm. o- obviously, coming from you know, uh, bros for Hillary or, or what the right. fuck, what the fuck ever. What uh, else could you expect from from people who have fucking a name like bros for? Dude, Hillary? Dude, even like like if you live in the real world, like even uh like progressives, liberals, a- a- any you know any any form or incantation of of um. Of, of people that are left of center, nobody likes Hillary. Nobody thought that that was a good idea. Nobody nope. was like, "Yeah, I want to go to war with Russia." That sounds like a fucking good idea. Yeah, no, nobody thought that uh, the liking Hillary was a good idea, and uh, it, it, well, except for people, you know, the the bros for the Hillary, bros for Hillary. So all like ten of them. I don't know what to tell you other than baby wieners do not go in mouths, folks. No, it's they do not. Fucking not right. And this is sick. Um. But look, I don't, I don't have, I don't have anything else. I don't either, man. So we're either. we're done. This podcast is over. Uh, there are costs associated with the production of the AnCap Barber Shop, and we would like to bring you more content. If you would like to help us out, we conveniently offer an abundance of avenues to do so. You can buy an AnCap Barber Shop T-shirt, make a one-time or recurring donation through uh, Bitcoin. Give a per episode donation of as little as a buck an episode using Patreon or even advertise on the Ancat Barbershop. Flex your free market muscles and go to ancatbarbershop.com. 
You can also find us on Facebook.com forward slash, and remember what that is. That <laughs> is uh, the Mixed Race Vagina. Uh, Ancat Barbershop. Search Ancat Barbershop on YouTube, Twitter, and IG at Ancat Barber, or send us an email at feedback at ancatbarbershop.com. We love hearing from our listeners, and if you're not an asshole, we might even shout you out on the show. Also, big thank you to executive producer, our EP, Bruce Wilk Jr. You're the man, dude. Uh, and uh, thank you for those of you that are that have joined us in the live stream and that will be watching this in the future. I believe I'm going to try to upload this to YouTube. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Uh, and I do apologize for the crummy lighting and all that stuff. And also, uh, if you haven't noticed in your uh, podcast, an audio-only listener, uh, we will be streaming these in the future. And uh, uh, I'm not going to give out a you know a time that we're going to do that because I'm I'm just not going to be able to stick to it. So uh, maybe one day we'll 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 get a harder schedule. But when it's there, it's there. And join in, comment, interrupt what we're saying, and uh, you know we'll probably bullshit about it. But uh, yeah, worms, guys, y'all have a good. One. Libertas Productions Podcast.